So here's my latest uh, eBay find. I got this for 99 cents. Um, definitely used, but uh, I'm sure it still works. Uh, it's made by many circuits. And it's a bit strange. Uh, it requires uh, plus 5 volts and minus 5 volts. So you think maybe it's an amplifier or something. Um, there's an RF in and then an RF1, RF2 out. And it's a switch. Uh, so you can send things in and switch it between two, two things. And it's TTL level controlled. So there's an SMA connector here. So there's four SMA connectors. I, I, ha I have a little thing I built onto here, so I kind of ignore that. That didn't come with it. Uh, but there's a TTL level switch in here. So there's circuitry in here that's TTL level, and then it does this RF switching. And uh, what I did was I, um, well, let's take a look at the day sheet first. Uh, mini circuits, it's good to uh, five gigahertz. And a single pull double throw. And the cool thing about these uh, that you might want to use this over one of those uh, coax relays is the switching time. Uh, the switching times are very fast on this. Uh, let's see. Where is the switching time? Nanoseconds. Uh, six, six nanoseconds? Let's see, 90% controls and 90% of RF turn on or 10% turn off. So uh, it says um, 20 nanoseconds typical and 40 nanoseconds maximum. So you can switch the RF in 20 nanoseconds. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then it looks like this. So uh, not only do you have a switch, uh, but you have a 50 ohm load too. So when you, when you switch this one, you take this one and, you, and you, it sends it to 50 ohms. And so it's, 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 it's switching these together. And then there's an actual driver here for the two uh, signals. A TTL level in, like I said, plus or minus five. And um, so I'm kind of curious, you know, uh, well, does it work? We'll test that. But I'm kind of curious about these 50 ohm loads. And when you come into this device, it will come in and go out without anything. So um, we'll have to test this with a load on it and see if uh, what kind of signal we'll get here. So let's sweep it out with the uh, Nano VNA. Oh, I forgot to, I forgot to uh, describe this little circuit that I put on here. It's just a 2.7K pull up to five volts and, and a switch to, to ground. So I can just toggle the TTL input high or low. Um, so that's all that is. All right, so I have plus or minus five volts hooked up. And uh, let's take a look at the RF1. Uh, RF1. This is the one that has the 50 ohm load in it, so we'll see if that 50, 50 ohm load is really 50 ohms. We can do that with a vector network analyzer. And yeah, there we go. Look at that. Very nice. Uh, so our Smith chart shows us just one little point there in the center from zero to a gigahertz. So uh, that one looks great. Let's take a look at RF2. See how that one's behaving. Now RF1 was normally closed, so it had the 50 ohm load already hooked up. Now RF2 will be no load until we energize it. So there we go, definitely no load. We're having a big arc here showing that it's just open. So let's close it. And yeah, there we go. We have the, uh, I really hate the nano VNA. I wish they'd fix that. The refresh doesn't get rid of spurious lines that just kind of appear. Anyway, it looks really, really good too. So RF1, RF2, both are operating good and it is switching. Um, so, uh, let's take a look at, well, that's about all we can look at there. So let's, um, let's change instruments. Let's use our tiny SA and we'll watch it uh, go through. Let's see what else. Go oh, no, we can do that with the, uh, with the nano VNA. So we'll do a through measurement. So we'll do, we'll take our channel zero and put that into RF in. And then we will take our 
channel 1 and we'll put that into RF1 and so now these should be connected together Let's see yeah all right so let's uh, turn off that and we'll turn off uh, we'll turn on uh, S21 which is the uh, through measurement and then we will energize it and there we go you can see that uh, we have a uh, straight across line there it, its insertion loss is only um, can I read that 0.88 dB so less than a less than a dB input and uh, so that's working great and then when I disconnect it that's our rejection there's nothing hooked up to it so wow the insertion loss is really low on this thing it's great okay so let's try out RF1 RF1 should be already connected yeah there we go and again it's uh, it's doing great it's uh, again 0.88 dB insertion loss and then when I push the button it'll disconnect just the opposite so yeah this is uh, this is working really really cool not bad for 99 cents huh uh, I'm not sure I'm not sure um, what I can maybe do a next video on. Um, I think it'll be good in some instances where we want to measure two different things and swatch, switch between them. Or uh, maybe switch between two spectrum analyzers. Um, we could have one input and then we can send it to uh, spectrum analyzer one or send it to spectrum analyzer two. Uh, that way they won't interfere with one another. So uh, we could give that a try. Uh, but this is a... Uh, I'll read the part number. This is a mini circuits uh, ZYSWA-2-50DR. Um, I believe this is an older model. Uh, they don't make this one anymore. Um, and I think the guy on eBay has got a bunch of these. So go pick one up for 99 cents.